Powers and Roots Laws of Indices with a focus on multiplying and dividing with Adam Maths Tutor. Here are the beginner questions, some of the easiest types of questions that you can find on this topic. The Laws of Indices let you simplify complicated expressions with powers just like these ones. When multiplying terms where the base numbers are the same, we can simplify these by adding the indices together. So the base number will remain the same and then 4 plus 3 is 7, so 2 to the power of 7. When dividing terms, where the base numbers are the same, we can subtract the indices, so the base number will remain as 3, and 9 subtract 6 is 3, so 3 to the power of 3. When raising a power to another power, we can multiply the indices together, so the base will remain as 3, and 2 times 5 is 10, so 3 to the power of 10. These rules do not only work when the base number is numerical, but also work when they are written as algebraic expressions. So for this one, the base number will remain as C, and using the same rule as before, 3 plus 3 would be C to the power of 6. It's important to note that when written as a fraction, this represents the same as a division. So sometimes they'll switch between these two formats. The base will still be F, and 4 take away 2 is 2, f squared. Lastly, we have a base of g, and 3 times 6 is 18. On to the intermediate questions, where we have an increase in difficulty with some more complicated expressions, but the same rules still apply. 5 to the power of 4, times 5 to the power of 1, times 5 to the power of negative 2. Our base is 5, and we're having to do 4 plus 1, which is 5, or add negative 2, which has the same impact as subtracting 2. So 5 take away 2 is 3. For the next question, we're multiplying these together, and then we're dividing by the expression at the bottom, which has also been raised to a power. We'll get marks for simplifying the numerator and the denominator separately. So let's do that. The numerator will simplify to 2 to the power of 9, and the bottom 2 to the power of 6, and then we can simplify it overall as we have a base of 2 and 9 take away 6 is 3. For the first part here, we have a base of q and then 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. This is being divided by q to the power of 2. Now we can simplify by subtracting the indices. We have a base of q and we're having to do negative 6 and we're subtracting 2. So q to the power of negative 8. The next questions involve a coefficient of the terms or the variables more than one. These can be split up and done separately so we can focus on the coefficients and do 2 multiplied by 5 which is 10 and then we can apply the rules just as we done before with the same base numbers. So the base number is e and we have 1 plus 5 which is 6. So 10 e to the power of 6. Simplifying the top 3 times 2 is 6. Our base is e, and 4 plus negative 2 is 4 take away 2, which is 2. Now simplifying, we have 6 e, and then 2 take away 2 is 0. For those of you that don't know, e to the power of 0, or anything to the power of 0, is always 1. So this would be the same as 6 multiplied by 1, which is 6. Lastly, we have 3x squared, which is being cubed. These raising to a power ones where we have a mixture of a coefficient bigger than 1 and a base number or term can sometimes cause confusion when cubing these as they follow slightly different rules. To avoid making this mistake, I would encourage you to write down what 3x squared to the power of 3 actually represents. This would be the same as 3x squared multiplied by 3x squared multiplied by 3x squared again. Now that we can see we're multiplying these terms together, we can see the appropriate laws of indices to use. So 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. The base is x, and then 2 plus 2 plus 2 is 6. So 27x to the power of 6. Lastly, we have the advanced questions, which are some of the trickiest types of questions that you can find on this topic. Simplifying the numerator and the denominator separately, we have a base of d, and then we're having to do 9 plus negative 11, which is the same as 9 take away 11, so is negative 2. Then we have a base of d, and we're having to do negative 2 subtract 
negative 2. When subtracting a negative, this would be the same as adding. So negative 2 plus 2 will give us 0. And we're in the same position as earlier where something to the power of 0 would be 1. This would be the same as 4e to the negative 2 times 4e to the negative 2 times 4e to the negative 2. 4 times 4 times 4 or 4 cubed is 64. Our base is e and we have negative 2 plus negative 2 plus negative 2 again. This would be the same as negative 2 take away 2 which is negative 4 and then taking away 2 again which would leave us with negative 6. The last two questions are similar. We need to write this as a power of 5 so they're not expecting us to work it out. We need to change all of these numbers so that they have a base of 5. This first one already has a base of 5. This is the same as 5 to the power of 1. 25 when written as a base of 5 would be the same as 5 squared and 125 written as a base of 5 would be the same as 5 cubed. Now that they have the same base of 5, we can simplify by adding these indices. 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6. Lastly, we need to write this as a power of 4. 16 as a power of 4 would be 4 squared. The next one is a little bit harder. Writing as a power of 4, which is the same as 2 squared, and then to get to the power of 4 overall, we must have done 2 squared to the power of 2. So using the raising power to a power rule, these would multiply to give us 2 to the power of 4. This is the same as 4 squared times 4 squared. And adding these indices, we have 4 to the power of 4. Before you go, have a look through the solution that I've provided to some questions similar to the intermediate ones. I may have made some mistakes. See if you can pause the video, spot what they are, and either tell me or make some corrections in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you found that video useful, don't forget to hit the like button and leave a comment. If you're struggling with maths or finding topics difficult, you can subscribe and turn on notifications to receive regular updates about new video tutorials. Don't forget to visit my website adammathstutor.com for a full searchable list of all topics with exams, questions and solutions. You can also visit me on social media using the handle at adammathstutor on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook and Twitter. All links in the description below.